Remember I said that there were two places on earth that uh, preserved this wonderful richness of the Cambrian explosion. One of those places is in British Columbia, which we call the Burgess Shale. Um, the Burgess Shale preserved fauna, meaning animals, um, beautifully in a fossil record. A lot of these fossils are really shiny, black impressions, carbon films on thin beds of shale. Remember, that's the type of fossilization called carbonization. Um, altogether, the fauna fossils form four major groups of arthropods, uh, being trilobites, crustaceans, and members of taxonomic groups that include scorpions and insects. Um, there were also sponges and crinoids and mollusks and worms and corals and chordates, right? So many different organisms proliferating in these um, Cambrian shallow seas. Um, so the discovery of the Burgess Shale awakened paleontologists to really just the diversity of life at the beginning of the Paleozoic um, during this Cambrian explosion. Um, so I'm going to give you just a few examples of some of the wildlife that existed back then. Um, and this is just a sprinkle of the, the diversity of different body shapes. Uh, one of them was Anomalocaris. This was uh, an animal shown in this picture whose name translates to odd shrimp. Um, <laughs> the reason it was named this is because some of the first fossils were just of the appendages on the front of it. And so paleontologists thought that those appendages looked a lot like shrimp. They named it odd shrimp. It wasn't until they found the rest of the body <laughs> that they realized just what an odd shrimp this was. It's not a shrimp. Um, it just kind of looks like one. All right, so the animal was up to a meter in length, three feet long. It had a large oval head, um, two eyes on the ends of little stalks, and the shrimp-like feeding appendages in the front. Um, just behind the barb-like spikes on those appendages was a circular mouth uh, with tooth-bearing plates inside of it. So this was definitely a predator who caught the prey. Um, behind its head, there were 11 overlapping lobes and a fan-shaped tail used for propulsion and swimming. This creature did not have any legs, um, so it just swam. Okay? But uh, I would not want to come upon this creature in the ocean. It was pretty fierce. <laughs> Now, an animal that was not so fierce, um, at least based on scale, uh, was this cute little fella called um, Opabinia. And this creature was so bizarre that when it was found as a fossil and the paleontologist who found it actually drew a script sketch of it to show what it would look like and he presented it to the Paleontological Association of England, um, the audience laughed, right? They're like, this creature is just outrageous. Um, but right, this is it. We have fossil evidence. We know that this is it. So this little guy, its head had five eyes. All of them were on stalks in this image. They kind of look like little blueberries. Um, it then had a, a nozzle or proboscis that um, attached its mouth to its head, kind of like a vacuum hose. And on the end of this proboscis, there was a jaw structure, a jaw-like structure, not quite a jaw, um, with an upper and lower half, each bearing spines, kind of like teeth. Um, the head had 15, or behind the head, there were 15 segments, each bearing a pair of thin lateral lobes. Um, behind this, he had gills, and the last three segments were this weird tail shape. Um, so unlike Anomalocaris, which I said was pretty ferocious, um, Opabinia was not very large. It was only about seven centimeters long. So it was actually just a real, really cute little fella. He was still a predator, um, but he was little. He only preyed on the small organisms. So predators like Anomalocaris and Opabinia um, would have caused selective pressures uh, on their prey which means that the prey would have had to evolve, migrate, adapt to not being eaten. So because of the evolution of these predators, the prey had to also evolve. And this is why when you get um, multiple levels of uh, multiple trophic levels where the higher trophic levels are preying upon the lower trophic levels, that causes all of those organisms to evolve more rapidly. All right, now one other really important animal or type of animal that we found in the Burgess Shale is chordates. So chordates are animals that at some stage in their development have a notochord. This is an internal supportive rod, kind of like our spine, or our spine is <laughs> does make us a chordate. Um, 
and uh, the nerve cord that extends along the dorsal side of that notochord, right? So we have a spine and a spinal column in that nerve, which makes us chordates. Um, chordates, like ourselves, in which the notochord is replaced by a series of hard vertebrae are called vertebrates. Okay, so the chordates that evolved in the Cambrian um, looked a lot like this uh, worm. <laughs> um, so not the, the chordates that we normally think of today, but the first chordates did evolve at this time. 